first of all, most of the brick and mortar banks just don't understand on a granular view which products and which segments does really make money. In general, they can tell us, but since they have like a lot of different customer segments, variety of different products, sometimes they struggle to understand where they need to adjust. So in this sense, our advanced analytics is helping banks to understand how does existing products work and then give a different insights and suggestions to risk product marketing departments and also to financial departments and to the stakeholders in terms of what your business look like if you, let's say, will use this newly proposed risk model. And basically all of this just allowed them to be more agile and to run business in a more well-controlled and data-driven way. I've never been to Dubai, which on the one hand is not such a problem. It's not really my vibe. I don't like luxury. I don't like shopping. I don't like extreme heat. But in my history, it's still a little bit of a missed opportunity. You see, very early in my career, before I'd done much traveling at all, I was put on a project that would have taken me there. It would have been my first time flying in business class. It would have been my first time staying at a luxury hotel. I think the one they used had an indoor ski ramp. But unfortunately, in the week running up to the trip, something happened in one of the other markets, and I think I found myself in Gaborone putting out fires. It was not to be. But more importantly, it really should never have been. The reason behind that trip was that the bank I worked for at the time had just bought a state-of-the-art collections decisioning system. All the bells and whistles, from a name we all know and trust to this day. However, to get it to operational condition... It needed collection strategy managers from multiple regions to meet together in person for a week to discuss the parameters we would insert into it and what we could and couldn't live with when we went home. In those days, systems were rigid and it was our job to work around them. Luckily, that's not the case anymore. Welcome to How to Lend Money to Strangers with Brendan LaGrange. Dimitri Wolkenstein, a CEO and co-founder at Tim Vero. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, Tim Vero OS is an advanced lending operating system that includes originations, analytics, and servicing technologies. So a real meaty discussion for us for you know what this show really covers. But before we start talking about the lending aspects, let's whet our appetites with a bit of a starter. What was your background? What were you doing before you founded Tim Vero? So before the founding of Tim Vero, me, the same as most of my colleagues, and also on the two co-founders, Anton and Anton, I personally have been working in investment banking. I did really like this job, and I believe that it also impacted the current state and the current unique selling propositions of Tim Vero OS. While you're working with stocks with equities and you have your Bloomberg terminal, you might understand the impact of all of the available data in each specific moment on the market, more or less, of course. And you can utilize this data to properly assess the specific value of some stocks, some company, and so on. So I did like this. Then when we started this company, Timber Company, and when we started to dive into the lending business, we're really wondering why the banks, in terms of the lending business, utilize all of the available data not so efficiently and really, really slow. Yeah, it's quite interesting because you know, I came from the other side starting in consumer lending, and we always thought of ourselves as being much more data efficient and, and much more database than corporate lenders. And we compare ourselves to them who are using you know, financial records from years ago. But you're right. You know, When you think about stock trading, it's literally up to the minute. So it really is a, a reset of, of that baseline. You know. If we move towards the, the Tim Vero story, it was about five years ago, uh, almost to the day, going on my quick LinkedIn search, that you launched Tim Vero as a modern day lending system. Now, I've recently spoken to a few different teams that are building you know, more agile decisioning systems. But in 2018, you must have been quite ahead of that curve. So what was that gap that you saw or I guess the motivation that you felt? Um, 
Yeah, that's a great question. Back in 2018, we started this company and like the main reason of starting this business, I'll be extremely honest with you, it was not to change the world. The only one reason uh, standing behind this was just that we were about to make some money. And I don't know how, but just because my personal background was really related to banking industry, the same as my co-founders and coming to the different digital players, fintechs, digital banks with whom we work with. We started to dive deeper into the problems that they are facing. And even like five years later, these problems still exist, that a lot of digital players do not have sustainable lending businesses. And the legacy players does have, in their opinion, but they also do not have any, any, any ability to evolve with these lending models and with these lending businesses. So basically, it was a little bit more organic in terms of how we got to this business, because we started from offshore development, we worked with some folks in the banking industry, and then we just started to dive deeper into their business. Uh, they all basically tell us that that's a huge problem when you wanted to launch, because first of all, you don't have any data, you don't have any understanding from where to start, and then you don't have really good tools, really like working perfectly tools which is going to help you to create this, as we call it, like continuous improvement process. Once you launch something, you receive the feedback from the market. And then you need to use this feedback as a market response on these products, risk modeling, what we expect, what we get, and so on and so on. And perhaps in most of the chances, you also need to make some pivots. It's a very slightly chances that you will get this right from the very beginning. And unfortunately, they just don't have these tools. You need to buy some really great origination platform from one vendor. You need also to buy a lot of really great tools for data transformation and data collection and, and data warehousing from the other vendors. You also need to set up a separate team, which is going to be making all of the integrations and trying to make it work smoothly. So yeah, it was like a lot of efforts. And unfortunately, banks, in our opinion, wasn't ready to, to go after this. Not the same, but a little bit like a comparable story was with the brick and mortar banks. They do have lending businesses, but unfortunately, they, they anyway struggle with this continuous improvement processes and continuous improvements of what they offer to market. Because first of all, most of the brick and mortar banks just don't understand on a granular view, on a granular way, which products and which segments does really make money. In general, they can tell us, like, we had one bill in, uh, in deposits. We lent one bill, 10% return, but since they have like a lot of different customer segments, variety of different products, sometimes they struggle to understand in which process or segments they need to be focused more and where they need to adjust. So Cap1 did have the same view on analytics, on the financial analytics and financial performance as we do have right now. We really learned a lot while we understanding how does they calculated this calculation of cash flow for each product and for each segment. It sounds like very basic, but it's extremely useful. So yeah, right now we wanted to offer this to a lot of banks, which is struggling, like even in 2023, with understanding the specific cash flow, specific profitability, each segment to each product. And Dimitri, what was it like when you try to start selling these systems? Because I always think back to something one of my MBA lecturers used to say that nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. And the world of decisioning systems is somewhat like that, where we have one or two of these household names. Often, you know, the head of decisioning grew up learning to code in that particular system. They've seen two or three generations of those systems at the banks and lenders they've worked at. And there's this heavy bias towards one or two names we all know so well. When you were trying to get with the procurement teams or with the buyers and you're a new startup, you know, you've got this great promise of, of more flexibility, of more insight, but you don't have that 200 year history. How did you find it to actually get this launched and get people to, to buy in and trust you? Yeah. So that's the biggest struggle. In the case of Timbero, decisioning is broader than just the risk underwriting or product underwriting. So in our case, this is primarily related to executive decisioning. What does it mean? It means like 
decisions which is making by business departments and stakeholders and business owners in terms of which products to launch, which risk models we should to enroll, and so on. So in this sense, our advanced analytics is the more like the framework, which is just stand on top of the origination and servicing and helping banks to understand how does existing products work and then give a different insights and, and give a different suggestions to risk product marketing departments and also to financial departments and to the stakeholders in terms of what your financials and your business look like. If you, let's say, use this newly proposed risk models, which our AI engines are created. But we are not replacing big players like FICO, like Experian. We still utilize this data so banks can build the existing risk models in our tools with this classical data sources. We also help banks to utilize extra data sources, such as payment information like Tink, like Blade, like Yapily, and some solutions like for SMB, let's say, like some extra information from a QuickBooks or from Amazon and so on. We just allow banks to connect all of these data sources, implement their existing risk models, then work on their existing processes, and then these analytics and these frameworks just helping to gain new models, which has got to be better in terms of performance, in terms of the quality, and so on. Anyway, regarding your question on uh, the struggles of selling this technology, yeah, step by step, most of the big names, like modern big names, like let's say Membu, also struggled with this, of selling to big guys, but their playbook was really, really useful for us. So you're trying to sell to small, mid-sized banks, fintechs, and you deliver your platform, you deliver your solutions. And these banks started to gain some profits and started to feel all of this impact our solution can give them. You have the numbers, you have the real numbers, you have the real use cases, and then the big guys will follow 100%. It has obviously resonated because I see you are delivering solutions in 45 countries around the world with big players, small players, medium-sized players, people in all different niches. At the right time as well, I guess, that there's a bit more appetite and understanding of the value of not just having data, but being able to react, as you say, like actually use this for executive decisions rather than some statistician hidden away in the back corner building a, a model. Yeah, that's exactly the point. Uh, just not having data, but like having ability to analyze this data and react. First, you need to have this data in a consistent, in a normal form. And then you should be ready and your system should be ready to implement these innovations. So why we also are, can be used in like so, so, so many countries. Just we create our technology more like framework style because we see a couple of trends. First of all, there are more and more banks which is trying to also have their IT departments to try to make a lot of customizations and fine-tune the solutions for their specific needs. So when we have our solution using very, very, very popular technologies, uh, such as Spring Framework of Java, React, Python, not like some of the players also on the market does use Salesforce, and it's great, but unfortunately the price to customize a Salesforce solution is just like way more higher than for Java developers. So they can do all of these customizations internally, and they can customize this framework solution for their custom niche needs, and also for the, some of the local needs. Yeah, and that framework is made up of, of different integratable segments or, or modules, I guess, for loan originations, for loan servicing, and for analytics. So before we get into those nuts and bolts, I just wanted to say that one of the things I loved, and I think it underlines this point you've been talking about, is that when you go to timvero.com, you immediately met with some business numbers associated with these different modules. You see 100 seconds time to money in originations, 80% cost reductions through better loan servicing, 20% increase in profits with better analytics. This is not a system that's been sold because it can process X many million transactions a second or talking about Gini coefficients going up from 60 to 61 or something. This is talking business numbers, and I, I love that. Uh, thanks for noticing this, because, yeah, that's exactly the problem I believe a lot of business leaders are uh, facing, because a lot of business leaders in the banking, they do not have this technical background. So once the guys from risk departments bring them the new model, your risk model, unfortunately, 
for a lot of guys, the information about the improved gene efficiency got to be really useful. So anyway, they will be happy to see some financial projections. They can easily do this and they can start their business, uh, lending business really quickly. And yeah, since we allow banks to customize all of the stuff, that's just the average. But you're not only analyzing, you're taking this data and machine learning powered tools, which is right now working on top of Amazon StageMaker, help retail departments, product departments, marketing departments create new models and analyze new models and compare them to the previous ones, to the existing ones. And then the second layer of analytics, financial engineering tool, as we call it, it helps to push these projections from these departments into the understandable for stakeholders view. And they can understand what's going to be the potential business impact of all of these innovations. And all of this can be done just in a matter of one week. I, I think one of the big things there is is that feedback loop between analytical data and financial data. If I think to my career, we would have analytical models on the one hand that might be relatively responsive in terms of certain bad rates are associated with certain profitabilities for a customer. But those were, from a modeling point of view, they were quite different to the actual accounting numbers of the business, which was done on this annual budget cycle. And there was only once or twice you could make adjustments to that. And that feedback loop I mean, you said six months, I think often it was 12 months between when you could really see how the models are, are, are operating and how it's impacting the actual business profitability. To have them brought together is a massive leap there. But first, let's maybe do it in a more sensible order and go back to originations. Talk to me in kind of nuts and bolts terms. What are you doing within originations to, to help um, speed this process up? In terms of the origination, we are covering end-to-end origination automation for consumer lending business and for SMB lending business, starting from when the customer can apply. We provide all of the modern channels. Of course, this is online channels, mobile app, integration with the web application. Uh, also, we does have a vendor portal. So each of the banks which is using our technology might launch their own buy now, pay later installment business because they can give these APIs to the, of this vendor portal to their partners. So the application, automatic underwriting, automatic scoring. And our analytics basically starts from the origination side because we are, we are primarily focusing on cleaning the data from the first step. We are really believing in doing the things right from the first time and not spending months or years resolving these data issues later. It cleans, makes consistent, and transforms in real time all of the data that comes and associated with specific borrower. So then it also sorts in a very in a very consistent and tabular form. And then all of the processes built on top of this. So with this ability to transform data on, on the very beginning, you have ability to build all of their business processes really simple because you can easily digest the data that you do need. And then you can build processes which is tightly connected to all of these pieces of data, like your underwriting, your, let's say, product segmentation, and so on, very easily and very fast. By the way, we also utilize some open source solutions for our origination automation. Because we truly believe that there is some solutions on the market, of course, open source, uh, which handle some things way better. Let's say it's a great open source solutions for transforming HTML documents into the PDFs. And then that carries on, I guess, if, if people want to have loan servicing, what sort of products are you able to manage there? And what, what are you doing differently? The outstanding functionality of the servicing part is that also utilizing these transformed and consistent data, it allows us to provide a lot of proactiveness and also a lot of automation. I'll give you an example. Let's say we have a bank and we have a lot of customers with, let's say, credit cards. And we also have some macroeconomic extra factors, let's say like an extremely increasing inflation. So we'd like to understand on, let's say, be weekly or monthly basis, how much customers in the real time might default and what should we do with this? So with our solution, you can easily run this proactiveness, reassess them, utilizing all of this data in a fully automatic way. 
and let's say even make some actions. If we do see that the customer is defaulting on some other loans, so we may, let's say, cut his limit on our credit card. So this proactiveness and the easiness of how you can build all of these proactiveness and automations on top of the clean data and on top of these processes is really outstanding. It's great to have it all there, but to have that data at people's fingertips with fast feedback without that dreaded six-month, one-year delay between, oh, I've come up with a great idea, I now need to put it in a queue for IT to build. To have it there is, yeah, from start to finish, taking in your data, sure, but also data from other sources. That is what underpins the right sort of culture to make these decisions, these feedback loops, and that incorporates finance. So I guess now's a good time to revisit that last one with analytics. Data we can understand, and it's not just the simple chart. You've brought in AI and machine learning, you know, words we hear about and we're all interested in, but really what does a modern analytics engine look like? What are you able to do? With our analytics, we utilize Pareto principle in the first place. And also, it's like a famous saying, garbage in, garbage out. So that's why we are focusing on the cleaning data from the very beginning. So we wanted to give banking leaders ability to understand in which direction they need to move in terms of the strategy, fast and efficient enough. So that's where we are focusing, because as I just mentioned, we have all of the data about each customer, about each application performance from the origination side to the servicing side, we have a lot of data points, which is already consistent and already transformed. Risk departments, product departments, and marketing departments can easily take this data in our analytics framework really easily, create a specific data set for them with the different vintages, with the different customer segments, with the different track records of this specific customer segment or application and so on. It only takes just in a matter of minutes to create a specific data set you wanted to build model on top of, and then push this, push this data set into the machine learning tools. In our case, this is Amazon SageMaker, but we also can try to work with some other tools. Basically, we utilize Jupyter on the Amazon cloud. And then uh, you receive your modeling results. First of all, you can compare them with the previous models. Let's say you do have one customer segment within one product. But let's say you want to compare how does that the specific vintages perform the previous quarter and this quarter. So we can easily compare all these models inside Amazon and see what, what is the difference. The next step, you push all of these projections and all of these newly created model into the one cash flow financial engineer view, where a lot of financial people and stakeholders see the expected situation. So they see all of the products that have been created within the taken period of time. And what was the expected amount of, let's say, products to be distributed, the average balances, expected write-offs, and so on. Then the second thing they see is the actual one. So they see actual results. And then once this new model created, they see the third view. How does your bank will perform, let's say, if you did use this newly proposed model, let's say, in the previous in the previous quarter or you can try to just project how just your bank will perform in the next quarter if you let's say utilize this new model from now and all of this gives stakeholders and financial and business people understanding in which direction to move and basically all of this just allowed them to be more agile and to run business in a more well controlled and data driven way and yeah, since we, we spoke about feedback loops a few times now, talk to me about Champion Challenger A-B testing. Is that something that the engine can also incorporate and speed up? Uh, yeah. So once you do have these proposed models, this is, this is explainable AI in our case, because you can see the entire path from the importance of the features and to foundation of all of these features from which raw data sources and how these features have been created. That, that's where this value loop started to be a real loop. Once you do understand all of this, what you need to test, and you should get back from an analytics site to origination site and create some testing campaigns with basically the copy of the existing products or the existing customer segments like customer profiles, but fine tune for them something. Click is that it's got to be the testing one and the system will be randomly, or of course, you can also customize this internally and track. So to understand if this model was really right in terms of her projections, 
Or if it's going to be not enough data, the system also will tell you that. So unfortunately, it's not enough data. So we need to, let's say, have this test another two, three, four, six months. So yeah, it's all about the testing. It's all about this agility. And then having these three way views of expected, current, proposed. And Dimitri, somebody might be listening and saying, this all sounds good, but too good to be true for me because my lending organization has some quirks or some things that make it special. But this is not just a case of kind of listen and imagine you offer the ability to do demos with the client's real data. So talk to me about how somebody who's interested in Tim Vero as a solution for them can go in and actually see how it works. First of all, we does offer real demos and we also offer so-called pilots. So you can easily come to us. We will dive deeper into your specific pains, specific processes, and we also be able in a matter of like maybe two weeks, maybe one month to create a pilot for you. It's also where we prove the easiness with which you can customize origination servicing flows in our system. Of course, it's got to be done like at a minimal cost or sometimes even with no cost. And um, timvero.com, T-I-M-V-E-R-O.com is where they can go to learn a lot more and see some of this. Yeah, so you can easily visit, visit our website and click the request demo. Most of the demos and most of their emails I'm still, I'm still taking personally. And we plan personally, I will be happy to have, first of all, this quick introduction call uh, to learn more about your objectives. And then, yeah, connect to you with the, the related product owners so they can show you a demo and dive deeper into this. Well, Dimitri, I think it's been really exciting to hear how decisioning has changed and what's possible today. So thank you for your time. But before I let you go completely, we are recording this you know, at the end of the year, the perfect time to think about the future and, and what's next. So as you look ahead to 2024, what's on the horizon or the, on the agenda for Tim Vero? The main idea is just to grow, test and new innovations because we have multiple of them which we need to test with the existing customers. Next year, more aggressively go after US and Asia Pacific, write more stuff for our blog. Yeah, some basic things like this. Perfect. Well, I wish you the best of luck for that. And yeah, thank you again for your time uh, today. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Please do look for and follow the show on your favorite podcast platform and share the updates widely on LinkedIn, where lending nerds are found in our largest concentration. Plus, send me a connection request while you're there. This show is written and recorded by myself, Brendan LaGrange, in Brighton, England. Show music is by I Am Wake. And you can find show notes and written transcripts at www.howtolendmoneytostrangers.show or just www.htlmts.show. And I'll see you again next Thursday.